Hey guys, what we're looking at here is my wife's Lexus RX 330. It's a 2005 and I need to swap the rotors and the brake pads out. To get the caliper pins out or the slide pins, you're going to need a 14 millimeter socket or wrench. And to get the caliper support bracket off, you're going to need a 17 mil. This is the rear rotor and what you're looking at there is the emergency brake. I did tie up the caliper just to get it out of the way. Now's a good time to inspect that emergency brake or the parking brake, see if there's any wear or damage, and then you can replace that. Over here we see the caliper support bracket with the 17 millimeter bolts. On the bottom here, we see the longer bolt, which is 14 mil. Both of these are 14 mil, but don't get them mixed up as the bottom bolt is a little bit longer. Replacing the rotor once you get them off is very easy. It's just a matter of kind of plug and play. You just pop it back into the place where the old one was. Then you'll need to reassemble and you'll start that by doing your caliper support bracket. And I apologize for a little bit of the shaky cam here as I've got one hand sort of holding the caliper bracket and the other holding the camera to the rear so we can get a little bit of a backside view. So go ahead and pop those bolts in and it can be a little bit fiddly because you're kind of hunched over there a little bit. Once you go to tighten them up they don't need to be super super tight just nice and snug. What I like to do is I'll take the wrench, give it a little bit of a tug up, and then give it a couple of quick wraps with my hand. And I've never had any problems. Here on the front of the old rotor, I have once again the beefy caliper, which is a lot beefier than the other because you got the weight of the engine on there. And you'll notice uh, that the piston is sticking out a little bit, which we'll talk about here in a, in a second. On the other side of the passenger, we're again just taking a look at that assembly. You're going to see that you've got your 17 bolts in the rear and your 14 millimeter bolts up front. And on that one, I actually have the new rotor already installed. Kind of a quick tip. Usually you're going to be replacing the rotor on an older car. And what happens is, is that kind of the rotor gets rusted to the hub, I guess, for lack of a better term. So you're going to have to kind of whack that pretty hard with a hammer. At least that's what I had to do to get it to break loose. But it will break loose, so just keep on whacking. When you are ready to put your brake pads in, you need to go ahead and give that a good clean with some brake cleaner. Get all the grease and grime off of there. Now you'll notice that the piston on those calipers is sitting out and I would show you exactly what to do. Unfortunately, when I thought that I hit record, I did not. So what I'll need to do is kind of show you through these crappy little drawings that I have. So your old pads are going to be worn down. The new ones are going to be a little bit thicker. So when you go to put those in the housing, and if we'll look over to the right, Normally, you want that piston to be flush. The way it's going to be now is it's going to be sticking out. So you're not going to have enough room to get that assembly back in. So what you need to do is you have to compress that piston back into your caliper. And the way that you do that is you can use a C-clamp or you can use a block of wood or you can use this little thing here, which you put the... Uh, the long thin piece on the back of the caliper and then you put that on the piston and just screw it down and it pushes it back in for you. So now that you've done that we're going to need to bleed the brakes so we'll open up the bleeder valve and this is a little contraption that you're going to see here that allows you to do this by yourself. Normally you have a couple of people but if you can find a little bit of a hose that will go over the bleeder valve and then you just drill a cap and what you'll notice is, as once I get into the car, I'll pump the brakes, and you'll start to see the fluid moving. And what that does is, is 
once you've got the master cylinder open and everything, sometimes air can get in or as you're pushing the pistons back in. So again, you'll see it starts to move here. We want to keep pumping the brakes until we get all of the air bubbles out and what we've got is just clear fluid going through. And once you've done that and get everything kind of buttoned back up, just take the car for a test drive, make sure everything works. And over the next couple of days, just check and make sure that your fluid level is good. So like I said, we'll go ahead and button that back up. And that is pretty much going to be it for the job that we did. Oh, one other quick thing. Now is a good time once you have that back rotor off, take a look at those parking brake assembly, see if anything's damaged. Also, it's a good time to give that a spray. All right, we're done.